unlike many other myths and legends in our society, the existence of mermaids are becoming more and more debatable with stories constantly emerging from people that have supposedly seen them. And then when you throw in things like the 2011 docu-fiction released by Animal Planet called Mermaids the Body Found, and the series called Siren released by Freeform in 2018, and much, much more, it only increases our fascination with mermaids. And honestly, I'd be lying to myself if I said I wasn't curious about them. So the, for the past maybe four days, I had been collecting as much evidence as I can, um, looking at as much stories of supposed mermaid findings that I've seen, and try to conclude whether or not I believe they're real or not. From Africa to China, from the Greeks to the Vikings, there have been hundreds of tales going around for thousands of years of supposed mermaid findings. And these are during times where these people had absolutely no connection to each other, but for somehow, they still managed to document the same exact stories. So I'm gonna start this video off by addressing some of those stories. Let's get some of the celebrities out of the way that supposedly saw mermaids. One of them being John Smith. In 1614, he reported seeing a woman in the water with long green hair, which was kind of weird because I believe he was the only one that had an account of the woman having green hair. He also reported that she had big eyes, a short nose, long ears, and swam very gracefully. And even though her features don't even sound that human, he said that she was by no means unattractive and that even while he was looking at her, he kind of started to fall in love with her until she swam back down into the water and he noticed that she had a fish tail. Now, like I said before, that's one of the more famous accounts of there being uh, a mermaid sighting, but some historians have even speculated if that account was even written by John Smith. Do I think it was? I don't know. I wasn't there in that time period. I can't tell. All right, next up is everyone's favorite colonizer, Christopher Columbus. In 1493, he reported seeing three mermaids, and I'll explain a little bit later why that's a little weird that it was three. Um, and what makes the story even a little bit more believable, I guess. He reported seeing three mermaids by Haiti. Now, unlike John Smith's story, he said that these mermaids did not look attractive to him at all. I don't think he necessarily said they were ugly, but he just never reported on how beautiful they were. He said that they only looked like humans in their face. Another pretty famous account was the one written by Henry Hudson in 1608. He wrote that he had saw a woman swimming in the water with pale skin, black hair, and a tail like a dolphin. Another thing that I found pretty funny is that a good amount of these mermaid tales come from Scotland. One of the tales comes from 1830 when a miniature woman was spotted in the sea. She had white skin and looked like a fish without scales. The villagers were reportedly so scared of her that they threw stones at her. When her body washed up on the shore a few days later, the villagers were confident that she was a mermaid. She was buried in a church graveyard and since they never left a marker for her grave, her grave is forever unknown. Another mermaid tale coming from Scotland was one that happened in the 1890s. This one was reportedly seven feet long with pale skin, long black hair, and wasn't exactly friendly. And like I said earlier, some of these mermaid tales come from Africa. And I'm not talking about hundreds and thousands of years ago. Some of them are as recent as 2012. In 2012 in Zimbabwe, workers working on a dam supposedly spotted a mermaid and refused to continue their work on the dam because apparently the mermaid had been harassing the workers. And the workers had refused to come back. The dam still needed to be built, so they hired white workers instead, thinking that they heard the stories from the previous workers there before, that they would think it was just a whole bunch of foolishness, they wouldn't believe it, and that, and that they would continue their work. But apparently that didn't happen. These workers as well also reported to be harassed by a mermaid and refused to continue their work. It wasn't until a ritual had to be done to appease the water spirits that this dam had ended up being finished. Another report from Zimbabwe that happened only two years ago on February 19th was... Honestly, this story was kind of dark and I was debating whether or not I even wanted to put it in here. But just because of how crazy it is, I feel like... It's one of those stories that people really do debate on whether or not there could be mermaids. Now, the story goes like this. Um, and just really quickly, was kind of funny, sad, I don't know, um, was that this area of Zimbabwe had previous reports about a mermaid attacking the villagers in this area. So the story goes like this. There were two boys that were herding cattle and they saw a mermaid in the water and according to their friend that was with them. They went after the mermaid thinking that it was just a big fish. And when they got over to it, the mermaid supposedly pulled them down, both of the boys, underwater with her, according to the friend that was there. And then pretty soon brought them back up and tossed them onto the bank, still alive. Now this is where the story kind of gets a little messed up and just really crazy. Uh, the next part of the story is that there was a group of, pe of people now at the bank along with the parents, along with the boy's parents. And apparently the boy's parents started crying which I didn't notice before, crying around a mermaid or just after a mermaid incident is apparently bad luck. 
And I tried to research why that was, and I found nothing. So if y'all know, tell me. I don't know why it's bad luck to cry after a mermaid incident. Maybe it's just in that region as well. But then it was reported by the parents and a few of the witnesses there that the mermaid returned back to the shore and pulled the boys back underwater until they drowned. According to the chief of that area, two other people had recently been killed in that area by a supposed mermaid. Now, this might sound kind of crazy to people, especially to people that don't that absolutely do not believe in mermaids. It sounds crazy to me, and I'm going to share my views about mermaids later on in the video. But apparently, tales of evil mermaids in Africa are very abundant, unfortunately, and are, are taken a lot more seriously, unlike how they are in other places of the world. And then apparently, after that incident had happened, the people of that community got together and, perform a, and performed a ritual to calm the water spirits down, which involved killing an animal and eating its meat without salt and other things um i don't i'm not african so i don't know how all those rituals work but but for anyone that wants to do any type of mermaid hunting or anything like that um like i said there have been a lot of reports in scotland in parts of africa although i don't really recommend going to see that mermaid she doesn't seem pleasant at all um and apparently the philippines also has a lot of mermaid sightings so many that they've even added a mermaid statue onto one of their shores in 1943 Indonesia, Japanese soldiers reported that a human-like figure with a mouth like a carp and spines on his back was spotted. It reportedly had lipless, fish-like mouth and with razor-sharp teeth. It was given the name the human fish. The sergeant reported it being small with red-brown hair and spines on his back and neck and having a humanoid face. Now y'all might be saying, oh, this is very recent. This is 1943. These are military men or Japanese sergeants, you know, and they had the whole body. Like, why didn't, why, where is it? Same thing that normally happens in stories like this. When he apparently went home and told scientists, you know, to come check this thing out. They didn't believe him. He thought, they thought he was crazy. And they never even spent the time to come and look at it. In January 2008, a man named Daniel Cupido reported seeing a mermaid. And apparently in the area that he was in, multiple generations of people reported seeing a mermaid there. Late at night, he saw a woman thrashing into the water. When he swam over to try to save her, she looked over at him and he noticed that she had red glowing eyes. She supposedly tried to take him, but the people that were with him apparently saved him. And the mermaid was seen by multiple people that night. The people of that area say that she comes out once a decade. In 2009 in Israel, alleged mermaid sightings became so popular that eventually a $1 million reward was offered for anyone that could prove the existence of this supposed mermaid. And to this day, no one has ever proved it. So... I mean, for you guys that actually do want to do mermaid hunting, Israel will be a good place to start. And one of the last mermaid sighting stories I want to talk about today was when they happened in 1430 in the Netherlands, when two girls that were out on the boat spotted a mermaid that was thrashing in the water. They rescued the girl, took her home, fed her, dressed her. They taught her how to sew, but they could never teach her how to speak. And apparently, the mermaid had lived on land for 15 years until she died. She tried to escape multiple times, but... To no avail. Now that story is probably one of the few ones that I'm very interested in. However, there are a few holes in it. One of the things being, how did a mermaid even live on land for 15 years before it dried up? I don't know. I don't know what happens with mermaids if they're not in water. Um, and just a few other things about it that just are very iffy. This one here isn't really a story, but I mean, I guess it kind of is one of a mermaid sighting. Um, in 1222, there was a mermaid that supposedly washed up on shore in Japan that was dead and her bones were apparently saved in a temple in Japan and they're still here to this day, although there's only about a few bones left because, you know, they were discovered in 1222. So also, once again, for you mermaid hunters, you might want to take a little stop in Japan as well. Now, honestly, I can go on and on about the mermaid sightings, but this video is probably already going to be long enough. So we'll just jump right into the origins of mermaids. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky for me personally when I was doing this research to place the origin of mermaids because tales of beings like mermaids that resemble mermaids, like, you know, uh, sirens and selkies and uh, nixes and just all these other uh, types of uh, mermaid type creatures, they've existed as well. These tales of these creatures for thousands of years. And sometimes they just get mixed up, especially when you're switching the tales over with languages. They get mixed up, like this tale gets mixed up with this. So it was kind of hard to exactly place when the mermaid tale started. And also, this is also why I'm including sirens into this video as well, as you probably saw by the thumbnail. 
because a lot of times I see them grouped up together. And I remember ever since I was younger, I always thought they were two different things. But I'll talk more about sirens a little bit later. Right now, I'll get into the definition of mermaids. According to Britannicania.com, mermaids are fabled marine creatures with the head and upper body of a human and the bottom half of a fish. In European folklore, they are said to be natural beings with magical and prophetic powers. This particular definition states that they are also referred to as being sirens that love music and that live for a long time and have no soul. There are many tales of men marrying mermaids, and my guess would be that some of these tales were inspirations for books and movies like The Little Mermaid. And now, like I said, it was very tricky to find an origin story of mermaids because they a lot of times intertwine with, sail, with tales of sirens and even sometimes nixes. I kind of found one origin story that's a tale that originated from about 1000 BC from a Syrian goddess that got turned into a mermaid from being thrown into the lake. But apparently the Greeks were the, one of the first people to describe mermaids, stating that they had scales that covered their entire bodies, gills, and a fish-like mouth. And while they were very enchanting and beautiful, they weren't really known for their singing like how sirens are. And according to legend, mermaids are said to live for a long time, hundreds of years even, but they don't have a soul, which, I mean, I'll get to that a little bit later on why that's a little bit weird that they wouldn't have a soul. Many religions, and I even saw one in particular was an Afro-Brazilian religion, have been known to worship mermaids for thousands of years even as actual deities. According to dictionary.com, sirens are one of several sea nymphs. They are part woman and part bird who lure mariners to destruction by their seductive singing. Funny enough, the origin of the sirens are easier to place than the origin of the mermaids. Now, like the definition states, these creatures are actually part woman and part bird. And a lot of people might not even know that they're actually part bird. So the fact that they get compared a lot to mermaids is very funny. I remember the first time I ever had saw a siren because before this, I kind of had this image in my head that they were just kind of humans that um, transform the way that they look, which they are. A lot of reports that they do transform the way that they look, um, that they're shapeshifters. But apparently they actually are part human and part bird. The first time I ever saw them was when I played the game The Witcher 3. And if y'all have not played that game, it is amazing and you should. But they kind of depict the sirens in a way that I started looking at them um, as being. They depicted them as having these kind of not really like bird-like wings, kind of like reptile wings uh, with a mermaid tail. But if you look at the Greek origins, they were originally three sirens and all three of them were human women. They were the handmaidens to Persephone. When she was taken by Hades, her mother, the goddess Demeter, gave the girls the bodies of birds to search for her. And they did just that. They searched and searched until they basically just couldn't find her and gave up. Demeter was so angry at the girls for not continuing their search that she cursed them by having them live in those bodies forever. And they were forever restricted to an island. Now, these girls are actually very beautiful and they actually have some amazing singing voices as well. While on this island, any ships that had passed by them, they would lure any sailors to come onto the island. Oftentimes either killing them or just having them imprisoned onto the island. Now with all of these Greek and Roman stories, there's always multiple versions of the story. And this one is one of those times. Now it was said that Hera, the queen of the gods, persuaded the sirens into, into a singing contest with the muses, who were the goddess of music. The muses had won the singing contest against the sirens. And as a reward for them, they plucked out the feathers of the sirens. The sirens had turned white and fell into the sea, and their lower body gradually turned into a fish tail. Their tails could apparently glow and attract men, and the men that they had attracted onto their island, they had killed them and used their bones as instruments. But they wouldn't kill all of them, like I said before. Some of them they had rescued and kept on the island, and gradually they became mermen. And because of their seductive abilities, they were envied by most women. And like I said before, that story is a little iffy just because it wouldn't make sense considering how they died. Because apparently the sirens had died um, with the story of Odysseus. But the story of Odysseus... The sirens were apparently the women that he had faced on his way back home from Troy. And in that story, Odysseus knew full well of the sirens' abilities to, to seduct and abduct men. So when he was going through their island, he had all of his men plug their ears with wax. And Odysseus himself, he wanted to hear the beautiful singing of the sirens. But in order to keep himself from going over to their island, he, he tied himself to the boat so that he couldn't be able to move. Fulfilling the tragic prophecy of the sirens stating that if there was ever a man that could never lure into their trap that they can never lure with their singing that they would die and that's what happened when they couldn't lure odysseus into the islands they apparently fell into the sea and died so that's the short little light-hearted story of the sirens 
And like I said, it's very weird when you're looking into Greek and Roman mythology just because when you're, there's different versions, there's so many different versions of these stories to where it's just really hard to find out if this is how this happened. You know what I mean? I mean, all I can tell you is this, according to the Greeks, they depicted the sirens as being half bird um, and half women with very beautiful, pa uh, with very beautiful faces. And these tales go as far back as about 6,500 BC. Now we get into the title of this video, Are Mermaids Real? In my personal opinion, mermaids to me are like aliens, all right? In a sense that when you think about the ocean and the fact that we've only, and that we've only discovered less than 5% of it, we have an entire another universe down there to where anything is basically plausible to me i mean people are still talking about there still being a megalodon down there and a kraken even so if it's not really so far out of the realm that a ginormous squid and a shark way bigger than a great white might still be alive right now then i mean i don't know i could possibly see it however i wouldn't really think that the mermaids would look anything like how they're depicted in some pictures being all beautiful and um having all this long black hair and pale skin which by the way there's something also pretty funny to me that some of these stories one thing that they have in common is that a lot of them describe the mermaids as having pale skin and black hair and that happens in a lot of these stories and like i said some of these stories and i said where some of them were from they're not in the same time period and they're also not in the same region as well so it's kind of funny to me that they have that same thing in common. But anyway, I personally don't really think that they look all beautiful and whatnot. I think they look kind of similar to how, like, if you imagine, like, this is what I'm trying to think of. I don't really think they would be, like, like my body right now with a fishtail. No, just because I think that you have to, your body has to basically look like your environment, like how it has to adapt to your environment. And I don't really think there are bodies that kind of fit to be living underneath water, our top half, not at all. Um, especially if they do exist, I would imagine that they live in a very, very deep water as well. And our bodies, how they are now, they would come, they would just compress from the pressure. It is extremely cold down there. We just wouldn't be able to survive. So I feel like their bodies would probably look a lot different than ours. Um, I feel like they would really look like they would kind of have like a humanoid figure, but I feel like, you know, things like they'd have like more webbing in their fingers. I'm not even sure they would even have hair, to be honest. I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't really think that they would be all that beautiful. Now, you might be like Aaliyah. If these mermaids apparently look the way that you say they look like, then why do all of these men describe them as being beautiful? All that I can say to that is that some men are into some weird stuff, okay? They were probably like, man, she ain't all that in the face with that tail, though. Or like, damn, you know what? For a fish, she kind of cute. But I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility for me. Just like with aliens, I don't, I don't know. This That's something I can't either confirm or deny, really. And there's an entire universe that we will never discover. So who knows is out there? And plus, I mean, look at some of the animals that we even have right now that we have discovered. Some of these animals are freaking amazing. Especially under, the, especially in the water. There are some things out there that just look so freaky and weird to where, shit, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a mermaid. And even if you think about it from a scientific standpoint or a religious standpoint, either one is very plausible. I mean, if you're looking at it from a religious standpoint, then it's like, look at all the intelligent beings that God made outside of human beings. You know, you got stuff like dolphins and elephant and elephants. I don't know what I was going to say just now, but... It wouldn't be out the realm to think that he would make a mermaid. Now, if you're looking at it from a scientific standpoint and you, you believe in evolution, then from what I understand about evolution is um, the creatures that we originally were, the reason that we look the way we are now is because of food supplies, uh, which will also explain why we don't see mermaids now if they do exist. Because what probably happened is we probably scared them off. One, like thousands of years ago, we probably scared them off with the first human reactions um, with the mermaid. They probably scared off or could then food, food supply, which is probably why they went so deep into the waters. But originally what could have happened was um, when food supply happened, you know how like a group of these species that wherever we were, like we were like these monkeys or whatever, had went off this way to go search for food. Um, and the Animal Planet documentary even talked about this as well. 
even though it was fake, I know that, you know, I don't need to tell me a million times, but it's something to really be thinking about as well. A group of those could have went into the water. It happens. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened. That's happened with a lot of animals. Orcas, they were originally like these little wolf-like animals uh, before they adapted into the water. That's happened vice versa as well, where water animals have become land animals. I mean, you have some animals nowadays that can live on both land and water. But like I had said earlier about the whole mermaids not having a soul thing, it's just weird to me that why they wouldn't have a soul, but we do. Why we all we went off into this way and they went off into this way. Like we were still the same thing, but one of us has a soul and the other one doesn't. Um, only thing that I could really say confirms that would be if you look at it from a more religious standpoint, then they could probably have a soul. I don't know. I really don't. That one just kind of, it was a little weird for me. Another reason why we probably don't really see mermaids like that or at all really would be because they they might be dying out, to be honest. And it's also kind of funny to me, like how a lot of these sightings are in Africa too, all these mermaid sightings. Because according to scientists and historians, that's where human life began. I mean, but that's all I really have for this. Um, I've done as much research as I could for this topic. Um, it's something that's really interesting to me. Like I said before, I'm not opposed to the idea of mermaids. I'm not completely, I'm not really saying that, there are, that they do exist either, but no, I just, I don't know. Apparently, a lot of people do because, like I said earlier in this video, there have been many, many sightings of mermaids. But you know, guys, just tell me what y'all think about this. Um, if you believe that mermaids exist, if you think that all these people are just insane and that all this is just fairy tales, um, just let me know. If you do believe that they exist, then how do you believe that they look? And also, this is just something that I want um, anyone else's opinions about if they have researched it. If you believe that mermaids and sirens are the same thing or something different because some of my sources said that they are the same thing and some of them said they aren't. So I'm kind of curious about that as well. But, you know, just tell me what y'all think about it. And if y'all have an opinion about it, then we can have a discussion. What was former?